So we came here today to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the Nakba, which is the Palestinian catastrophe when in 1948 Palestinians were, were expelled from their homeland and Israel was created against their will. But we didn't realize that we'd be here to mark the continuing Nakba because of what's happening in Gaza that illustrates that the oppression of the Palestinians, the occupation of the Palestinians, the lack of the realization of their rights continues. Today will be here tomorrow. Uh, and, and really, that is why we must continue to stand with them. And today that became therefore about what, what's the, the Nakba and the continuing Nakba. The visuals, first of all, are important. So Palestinians will be looking to see what is happening around the world. Are they forgotten? And this demonstrates to them that certainly in the UK, they are not forgotten. People uh, are here today despite rail strikes and, and so on, uh, because that sends that message and that's a visual message. A big demonstration with Palestinian flag uh, and placards sends them uh, that they realize they're not on their own and it gives them hope. And especially when we have it outside Downing Street, uh, the, 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 where, where the prime minister resides, it is sending a direct message that the UK must end its complicity but also its double standards. People talk about uh, the Nakba 75 years uh, where the UK has done absolutely nothing to stand with Palestine, nothing. And so that's after decades. Whereas when it came to the Ukraine, which is only a few days old, a year is only a few days, 365 days, not decades, and look at they moved heaven and earth, weapons, the they, uh, uh, United Nations resolutions, all of that, Zelensky appearing on uh, speaking to Parliament, and I stand the Ukrainian people, but they must, the UK must do the same with the Palestinian people, because apart from anything else, the UK is the root cause of why the Palestinian Nakba happened. It was the Balfour Declaration. We stand very near the Foreign Office here today, where they created that uh, 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 promise. To, to people who didn't live in the land, that they would give them the land of another people. Yeah. Absolutely horrendous uh, piece of uh, uh, UK. Boris Johnson called it uh, fudgeramery, fudgeramery by the Home Office. So that's why we must continue to, sh to, 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 to come out and, and hope we're not here when, to mark the 100th Nakba. We want this to be over as soon as possible. Well, isn't it interesting that Michael Gove and his his, his pro-Israel uh, uh, MPs, the ones who go with them, are doing this just for to, to shield Israel. So they talk about the anti-boycott bill as if it's a gener generic bill. It's about the foreign policy only being, you know, uh, developed by the Foreign Office, and therefore you can't have public bodies boycotting a particular country if there isn't a UK policy to boycott it. But he's doing it to shield Israel. How, it is shameful. One, it is, it is to stop freedom of speech and expression, but it is also to shield a country that at least five reports, or reports by five human rights organizations have said is practicing apartheid policies. So instead of shielding it, we should be bringing it to account. What we call, we call on all the parties, whether it's the Conservatives, whether it's the Labour Party, or whether it's uh, the Liberal Democrats, uh, that they must stand with justice. They must stand with the Palestinian people in this conflict because they are the people who are facing war crimes on a daily basis. The, the, the opposition, by all counts, is likely to become the next government. It has existing policies that were passed at conferences which the leadership appears to have disregarded apart from recognition of a Palestinian state. The point about recognition of Palestinian state uh, is that when that resolution was passed, it became something the Labour Party would do immediately. And Kiyastana should do the same. It should be an immediate recognition, not start using conservative uh, language of when it's appropriate. They haven't used it yet, but I can guarantee that is what they would be tempted to do. But they must do the right thing uh, when it comes to the Palestinian people stand with them until they attain all their rights. And he should be engaging with the Palestinian community. 
That's another thing that Keir Starmer has failed to do. He should be engaging with the Palestinian community to listen to them, to understand their anguish, and to find ways by where the Labour Party, which has traditionally stood with people, uh, people's human rights, does the right thing.